what to test. Of course, the big question at this point is what precisely you should be testing. What can impact on your SEO, your CTR, and your engagement? What factors are easy to change? Here are some of the best options to think about when deciding what you want to change. Keywords. Perhaps the most obvious example of something you can try changing with your SEO is the keywords you employ. Let's say that you have a few pages that are ranking high for a particular search term, but the problem is that said search term doesn't get a lot of search volume. You have two options. Keep the page as it is or attempt to swap the term for a related one with a higher search volume. We'll talk more about whether this would work later in the training. Before you go ahead and potentially jeopardize a lot of old pages that are working for you, why not run a split test on a few of those pages and see if it has the desired effect? Likewise, is it better to aim for just one keyword or perhaps two, maybe a whole bunch? Do long tail keywords work better than highly popular ones? All of this is open to experimentation. Keyword density and placement. Just as it's important to think about the precise keywords you use, you also need to consider where and how you are using them. Optimal keyword density is a fraught subject matter with some creators saying that 1% is more than enough and others recommending you go much heavier handed with 3%. Then there's the placement. Popular opinion tells us that keywords placed in the opening and closing paragraphs of articles or in the H2 headers are more likely to gain the attention of Google. Again, though, there's the risk that this could be off-putting for viewers or that the belief could be based on pure hearsay. So test it for yourself. Amount of content. If you're hoping to give some old evergreen content on your site a bit of a jolt and help it start performing better, then you might be considering adding more content to it. Typically, the advice is to make posts a little longer, ranging from between 800 to 1,500 words. But that isn't always the case. So again, before you spend a huge amount of time bulking up those old posts, try doing it with just a few and see if it actually helps. Page Speed if you've conducted an SEO audit for a client, then one of the things you might suggest is that they could boost their site performance by increasing their load speeds. That sounds like good advice, but what you really need to consider is that page load speeds can take a lot of work to fix. It might mean compressing images, deleting plugins, or even changing to a different server. Whatever the case, you want to be sure that this is going to yield some actual measurable improvement in their ranking, and that's why it can be a good idea to go to the effort on a few pages first and then see if everything works. Links. Linking out to authority sites and linking internally is another factor that can have a big impact on SEO. A lot of SEOs will tell their clients to constantly link internally, but is this really a good use of their time? Images. How many images are optimal? Does it hurt engagement to place a large image right at the top of the page? How does Google react to that? Do JPEGs perform better than PNGs? I recently worked with an organization where the CEO hated PNGs and mandated that they never be used. That might be charming and all, but unless it's based on data, it's just ignorance. Titles. Changing the title of your article or blog post could improve or hurt CTRs, your engagement, or even your eventual conversion rates. You can even do this on a post-by-post -post basis. Test two versions or more of every single post and then see which ones do best. Use the title that outperformed the others.